President Biden meets Queen Elizabeth at Windsor Castle as the G7 summit comes to a close. Now the president and other world leaders are set to confront issues surrounding China and Russia in this week's NATO meeting. So for more on that, let's welcome in former advisor to Margaret Thatcher, Niall Gardner, global business analyst Hillary Fordwich, and the author of The Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang. Good morning to you all. Niall, I'm going to start with you. The royal family was very active during this year's G7 summit. Prince Charles addressing the leaders about sustainable markets initiatives and the Queen attending a reception with the G7 leaders and their spouses. Is it typical for the royal family to be this politically involved? Well, uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on the show today. And uh, uh, as you mentioned, of course, the Queen played a very prominent role in uh, this year's uh, G7 summit. And uh, the Queen does play a a prominent uh, role when you have major international visitors to the United Kingdom. There's nothing unusual about that. And I have to say, you know, the Queen's uh, leadership uh, has been absolutely uh, stunning at, at the G7, as, as always. I mean, she is an incredible leader of the free world in many, in many respects. She is a magnificent host, a magnificent representative for, for the United Kingdom. Uh, and so the extremely active role that you saw the Queen uh, play uh, over the last few days is not unusual at all. And it's a testament, of course, to her tremendous uh, leadership ability, uh, and also the fact that she she very charmingly hosted uh, uh, Joe Biden at Windsor Castle, even though Joe Biden has a has a track record in the past uh, of uh, being very sympathetic towards Irish nationalism. He has not been a supporter of the of the monarchy uh, at all, uh, and uh, you know Joe Biden is not exactly the most popular figure in Great Britain at this moment for many many reasons. But the you know the the, the Queen will always host uh, international leaders with, with tremendous uh, grace uh, and uh, and charm, and she she did so of course uh, this uh, this weekend. And President and Biden, yes. Oops, sorry, not to cut you off. President Biden Go did ahead. talk about that meeting with the Queen. Let's take a quick listen to that. Uh, I, I don't think she'd be in Silver, but you bet my mother. She reminded me of my mother in talk. terms of the, the look of her and, the, you know, just the generosity. Now, Niall, there were some differences of opinion about which countries deserve financial aid, particularly China. What effect do you think the G7 summit should have on the global economy? Well, I have to say I wasn't particularly impressed by this year's G7 uh, summit and the global economy because, After all, the United States, which is supposed to be leading the the free world, uh, put forward a number of big government proposals, including this uh, global minimum corporate tax. And that's not the kind of message the United States should be sending. The U.S. should be leading the world in terms of economic freedom, in terms of advancing economic liberty, in terms of free markets. You didn't see that kind of pro-free market agenda at the G7 this year. Not least because with uh, with Joe Biden's administration, you have probably the most left wing U.S. presidency in American history. Uh, and this is not a pro free market uh, U.S. Uh, government. So uh, I was very disappointed in terms of what came out of this year's uh, G7 summit. Uh, I think Boris Johnson should have stood up to uh, Biden a lot more on the economic agenda. Uh, after all, uh, the British government is far more in favor, I think, of free market philosophy than the Biden administration. Uh, so, so overall, uh, I think uh, hugely disappointing in terms of the big picture on the global economy with regard to this year's uh, G7 summit. 